Hello, thanks very much for joining me. It's Lee Cunningham here from UIDME, the UK's leading emergency ID and alert service. So um, this is a second of three videos, three short videos. I wanted to split them out because this one is really important uh, and I felt that it deserved a video all, all of its own. And it's all about child ID, specifically what we should be teaching our children to do if and when they become lost in a public place. You remember, if it's ever happened to you, just how scary that is, not only for ourselves as children, but also our parents. It's a, a horrendous ordeal, uh, even if it's two, three seconds, um, you know, it's, it's terrible. But the, the, what sparked this uh, research off that I've been doing is uh, a Net Mums article, which on the whole is really, really good. In fact, I'll, I'll link to this from um, the information below this video. So click into it, have a read for yourself. But I felt that um, this is where it, it kind of, it goes a little bit woolly and it doesn't, it, it, it's not that it doesn't give the information, it's that I feel that the information is more relevant to the older end of young children. So if you take children from, from say five to 12 year old, 11, 12 year old, the older they get, the, the easier it is to teach them things like, you know, concepts like uh, what, is a, what is a safe stranger and how to identify them, how to identify a safe building, um, such as a restaurant, a cafe, you know, a, a local business, a police station even. Um, but the younger the ch child is, the more difficult it is. So this information didn't seem quite relevant to that younger end. And, you know, of course, in the event that a child, a younger child goes missing, a very young child, then we really want to kind of um, mitigate that, um, that kind of time, really reduce that time and get reunited with them as quickly as possible for their sake and, of course, for ours too. So um, I've been doing some research. I've come across a fantastic study, which I think you should um, watch and share. And I'm going to use what I call the YELL method. Uh, and I'm going to reference it, tell you where I found it from. How long do you think it would be in seconds before you realise your child is no longer with you? We would hope, obviously, that it never happened. But I think most parents would say, I'm going to know within five seconds, ten seconds, you know, um, maximum fifteen. As child, children get older, maybe they're more likely to wander off, stop and looking at things when you carry on, you know, that kind of thing. But the younger a child is, I think that we're more vigilant. Um, um, given that an athlete can do a 100 metre dash in something like 10 seconds, then our children are not going to be that far away when we realise that they're no longer with us. I hope that makes sense. They're going to be within a quite a close proximity, uh, quite a close proximity, so 20 metres maximum. I know that if my daughter shouted daddy or mummy uh, from 20 metres, I'm going to hear her, no matter what the kind of noise, look, well, within reason, you know. Um, so the YELL method is a method that's taught by um, a doctor called Dr. Jonathan Tarbox over in the States, and he teaches this to children with autism. Um, I'm gonna teach you the method in, in a second, but the reason why I think that's more appropriate to younger children is because that it's more difficult. Well, two, two reasons. One, it's more difficult for, to teach them um, the safe stranger differential. Uh, how to identify a safe stranger and a non-safe stranger. And then the second uh, reason is because it's much more socially acceptable, if that makes sense, for a younger child to be screaming out for its mummy and daddy. It might seem irrational for a 13-year-old to be screaming mummy and daddy or mum or dad, whereas a five-year-old is going to attract the right kind of people and actually probably um, deter predators. Um, because a predator would surely be more likely to think, hang on, that's going to attract too much attention. So, um, let's go through the method itself, and then um, I want to tell you how uh, Jonathan Tarbox um, advises how to really consolidate the learning. So, the method is quite simple. We teach our child 
as soon as they realise that mummy and daddy is no longer with them, to yell mummy or daddy, you know, or both, and stay where they are, stand still, stay where they are, and yell as loud as they can, mummy, daddy. Um, you would probably be likely to hear them and, uh, you know, head straight away, obviously, for the, the direction in which they are. But then we can also hopefully teach them that if that doesn't work, then it's likely that they're going to get a helper um, within seconds. You know, no one's going to really ignore them. Someone's going to turn around and, and ask them, are you all right, kind of thing. And, and it's at that point we try to say, you know, speak to the female, the, the mother um, with other children, if possible. Because as someone said in a video, not all men are predators, but most predators, unfortunately, are men. And obviously that's not always the case, uh, but we have to kind of guide what's going to be the, 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 the highest chance of safety in any given situation. And that in this situation would be a female um, a female mother. So, and then of course, to tell them that you are lost, uh, to show them if they're wearing a, a, you know, an ID wristband, such as this one by Vital ID, um, to show them that. Now, the ones that we do, um, I'm gonna plug it obviously, because I'm passionate about it, but the, the Vital ID brand, we also couple up with the UID Me service. So you can store all your uh, parental contact information on that band. And it can also, and it can be accessed from any smartphone, tablet, or PC. And it can also send out an uh, an alert to parents' mobile phones as soon as the profile is accessed. And it can add the contact details of the very person that's helping your child. So th that's the third thing. Number one, shout as loud as you can, "Mummy, Daddy, stay where you are," and shout "Mummy and Daddy." Number two is you know, identify a trusted stranger, a mother, preferably, um, or someone in a uniform. But I do think that that learning as they get a little bit older. Um, and then number three, tell them that you're lost. And of course, show them your ID product. Um, that's the method. So consolidating the learning is, um, as Jonathan Tarbox says, by role play. You can tell someone a thousand times how to shoot, you know, like a basketball. But that theory is not going to help them when they get on the court. They've got to try it. You've got to practice it. And I think you've also got to practice it in order to remember it. So I feel that taking our child into a public place and, or, well, as a minimum, role playing it at home, you know, with maybe other members of the family. Um, in a kind of let's pretend, but I wouldn't make it personally a fun activity. You know, I, I, I think it's important that they know the, that it's a serious thing. Many, many of the videos that I've watched where even, you know, people of authority like policemen and women um, going into schools and, and teaching children, it, it's almost like they make it a fun activity when they, they go through this kind of role play. And... I understand why, of course, to keep it kind of, um, to make it kind of stick, if you like, with children. But I do think that sometimes it's made too much of a fun activity. I think the, the it's a very serious situation. It's one that we want to stamp out the moment it happens, uh, or certainly within seconds. So I'm going to reference the um, Jonathan Tarbox um, video in, in the, if you look in the kind of information below, and I'll also reference this um, article from Netmums, which is, as I said, on the whole, it's very good. And uh, if this video has helped you, please click the thumbs up, share it with your family, friends and other parents. Thank you very much. Take care.